Hello, we're here at the historic Craigflower Manor property and we're hosting the 157th Victoria Highland Games and Celtic Festival. My name is Jim Maxwell. I'm a president of the Victoria Highland Games Association and on behalf of the board of directors, I'd like to welcome you to this short video. Of course, with the pandemic, we can't have our traditional Highland Games with over a thousand participants and 20,000 spectators. However, we're limited to 50 on site, but we're doing uh, sections and we're showing all the main components of a traditional Highland Games here at Craig Flower. We started off with heavy events who will be running a full competition all day. And on our slots, we have Highland Dancing piping and drumming competitions, mass pipe bands for the opening ceremonies. Then we're following up in the afternoon with pipe band performance, Irish dancing, Gaelic sports, agility dogs, and finishing off with a Celtic folk band. Well, good morning. My name is Carl Jensen. I'm a former athletic director with the Victoria Highland Games Association. Now I'm a director at large and I'm really happy to be here in beautiful View Royal, BC as we are holding the 157th Victoria Highland Games COVID edition. Now what does a COVID edition mean? Well, it means that uh, we're working within provincial health officer guidelines and we're operating an event that is going to have less than 50 people on site. We're going to be maintaining social distancing of at least six feet between all of our participants and we're going to go ahead and have our 157th games because we recognize that if we didn't hold the games the streak would be broken. So we're here to focus on heavy events. As you can see I'm clearly not built for the dancing portion of the day. I'm going to be spending my time down here with the heavy events athletes throwing cabers, stones, hammers and weights. Now what does that look like a little bit? It's a sport that dates back. It precedes the Olympics. Back ancient Scottish times, you've, you had large men and women hefting objects, stones, cannonballs, and throwing them for sport. They said it used to be the sport of kings, as this is what the soldiers would do in between battle to put on a show for their kings and the lords. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the full gamut. We we're going to start with, a, with an open stone event. We're going to move into the Braemar stone. Now the open stone event is similar to what you would see a weight as a shot put in the Olympics. So the Olympic shot put is about 16 pounds. Well, we're going to throw an open stone that's going to be 16 to 18 pounds. Now that's our light stone. We, got, that's, we call that the little stone. Then we're going to go on to the Braemar stone. Braemar stone comes from Braemar, Scotland, and that's the big stone. That's going to be anywhere between 22 and 28 pounds. Here in Victoria, we've got a beautiful Braemar stone. It's about 27.9 pounds. It's big, it's ugly. It came out of the ground in beautiful Machosen. And basically the athletes with the Braemar stone, they're gonna take that stone similar to a shot put, tuck it into their neck, stand and push and drive it out into the field and see who, how far they can throw it. Now, these athletes are gonna have three attempts in each event. The winner is the one that obviously throws the farthest. In terms of rules, it's, it's pretty simple. You stay behind the tow board. We've got a great judge here today, Dom Horgan. He's a longtime judge. He's judged some of the best Highland Games athletes in the world have come through Victoria. We held the world championships here just a couple of years ago. And so we've got one of the best judges that we've ever well, seen. Well, some of the things you're, you're watching is you're watching foot placement. Um, to make sure that they're, they're within the trig lines and the trig lines are basically your border for uh, um, where you're throwing from and if you step outside it's uh, considered a foul or uh, you'll hear a judge call, judge call foul or, or an, um, a no, um, no measure or no score or something along that line and that basically indicates that uh, you, don't, um, you don't record that measurement. Um, you're also looking for um, whether or not an athlete is out of control because it's your job to ensure the safety of athletes and the safety of others. So you want to make sure that that athlete is in full control of the implement because the implements are quite heavy and, and uh, can cause significant damage to people if they're not paying attention. Um, so it's your role as, as a judge to ensure the safety, to ensure that everybody's having fun, everybody understands the rules, and uh, you're basically moving the athletes along to make the day uh, as streamlined as possible without, uh, without breaks. Uh, I've been used as head judge for the Victoria Highland Games. I've been used as a head judge for Tacoma Highland Games, um, uh, some of the bigger games in the Pacific Northwest, in, in Seattle and, and area, uh, Washington, Oregon. 
yeah so it's it's uh it's been a good ride and i enjoy it i enjoy it a lot in terms of what else you're going to see you're going to see hammers you're going to see weights so right now we are doing the weight over bar event we're down to three remaining athletes and there are top three in the overall adam drummond alex makara and ray shahovich so up next this is alex and this is first attempts they're at 14 feet now the weight over bar event if you're wondering what the weight is the open class weight is going to be a 56 pound weight and the masters are throwing a 42 pound weight masters being anyone over the age of 40. so these athletes have been hard at it all day since 9 a.m this morning they're down to uh, three remaining events up all right so they're going to have three attempts at each height Went over bar is a old Scottish event from the old days in the farmyard where they would often string up something over a branch or a tree and they would try to throw the weight up and over the, the weight and see who could throw the highest. All right, this is Ray Shahovich. His first attempt or second attempt at 14 feet. Now Ray is uh, one of our masters, so he's gonna throw the 42 pound weight. And he'll look to go up and over that bar right now. Here he goes, this is Ray Shohovich. Ray's our athletic director, puts on the Victoria Highland Games. There you go, that's up and over. That's what the athletes wanna do. An appreciative clap from our uh, athletes in attendance here today. Up next, this is Adam Drummond. Adam used to uh, used to live down here in the Victoria area. Now he lives up out of Courtney Comox area. He's the athletic director for the Campbell River Highland Gathering that usually happens in August. All right, this is Adam Drummond, his second attempt. Weight of bar, 14 feet up and over. There you go, that's Adam Drummond up and over. So that leaves uh, it down to Alex Makara. This will be Alex's second attempt at 14 feet. Alex is our overall current leader today for the men with Adam close behind, within a point of him. So it's a very tight competition between first and second place. Here we go, second attempt, Alex Makara in the weight over bar event. Once again, he's throwing the 56 pound weight over bar. There you go, up and over for Alex. So a lot of what you see with the heavy events in the Highland Games, it comes from function in terms of there's a practicality to it. One of the most famous events, the caber toss. Well, how did the, how did the caber toss start? So that's the one that people say it's like tossing a tree, tossing a telephone pole. Well, it literally is a tree. I mean, we take the limbs off of it. We cut it down a little bit, but you're going to see cabers of anywhere from uh, probably 10 to 14 feet long for, for amateur level and the pros will toss cabers that are 20, 22 feet long and upwards of, well, we have a caber here that's 155 pounds that has only ever been turned by two men here in Victoria. So that's the caber toss. But as, as I mentioned, there was a function to it. It was about being able to, in ancient Scottish times, toss the trees into the river to get them down to the, to the mills. So if you couldn't toss them straight, so the caber is, a, is an accuracy event where you're going to toss the caber end over end. But if you couldn't do that, you couldn't get your tree down to the mill. So as you can see, it's built and function. The, uh, the open stone, they used to literally pick up uh, cannonballs from the battlefield and they would toss that because again it was it was all about the function of it. So really what we're doing today at the Highland Games is the heavy events is really a portion of the day and and really as as we like to say it's it's about bringing us together celebrating the Scottish culture and and as our pre president Jim Maxwell always says at the Victoria Highland Games everybody can be Scottish for the day. The camaraderie in this sport is is like nothing else. You you watch amateur level athletes from the amateurs to the professional and you're not going to find a, a more fun-loving camaraderie like group of athletes that come together and, and celebrate the sport and have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, Kathy White's Highland Island Dance Academy has been performing here at the Highland Games for probably close to 40 some years already. Uh, Kathy's got uh, dance dance groups in Langford and in Duncan and uh, we've been showcasing here today some of the wonderful dances of Highland. Scottish Highland dancing is one of the oldest forms of folk dance and both modern ballet and square dancing can trace the roots back to the Highlands. 
Dating back to the 11th or 12th century, the Highland dances of Scotland tended to be highly athletic male celebratory dances or triumph or joy or warrior dances performed over swords and spike shields. According to tradition, the old kings and chiefs of Scotland used the Highland games as a way of choosing their best men for their retinue and men at arms. Highland dancing was one of the various ways men were tested for strength and stamina, accuracy and agility. The Scottish military regiments used to use Highland dancing as a form of training to develop stamina and agility. Competitive Highland dancing started during the Highland revival of the Victorian Britain and was only for men. Ladies began competing only at the turn of the century. The, the drummers compete in different levels, in different grade levels. So we're looking for different skill sets at those grade levels. Um, I'm looking for their ability to control the sticks, get musical rhythm out of the scores that they're playing in support of the pipe tune that they're accompanying. So it's musical expression is the, the key feature that I'm looking for. It kind of uh, sets people apart. People will have different skill levels depending on when they started to learn the instrument um, and that's why we're divided into different grade levels. So those are the kinds of things I'm looking for. Tone of the drum, confidence of the player, the rhythmic expression and uh, today it's not a competition, it's an adjudication. So they'll end up receiving uh, a sheet with comments on it to help them continue to improve their performances.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 157th Victoria Highland Games and Celtic Festival. My name is Jim Maxwell. I'm the president of the Victoria Highland Games Association, and it's my pleasure to be your MC for this opening ceremonies. The Victoria Highland Games have been held at various venues around Greater Victoria at various times of the year. Over three centuries. The games have spanned the three centuries. They've been around a long time. And it's fitting that we hold the 157th event at Craigflower, home of the association in this pandemic year. By doing so, the Victoria Games are the longest continually running games in Canada, being presented through both world wars and through the COVID-19 pandemic. The Games is constantly evolving to present the best components of Scottish and Celtic arts, culture and heritage. This year is no different as we hold our live stream event with no spectators. I'd like to thank all the participants here today for being part of this long-standing tradition and I'd like to thank the Pipes and Drums for coming out for this opening ceremony. Pipe Major Warren Fells, please proceed. Ron has been a great partner to work with for the joint Canada Day celebration put on at Craigflower property here by the Town of U Royal and the Victoria Highland Games Association. Thank you, Jim. It's with great, it's with great pleasure that I welcome you here on behalf of the Town of U Royal for the 157th Victoria Highland Games Celtic Festival. Council is pleased that the Highland Games Association, Victoria Highland Games Association, is able to hold this event at historic Craigflower Manor. The association has taken on responsibility for the care, maintenance, and preservation of this national historic site. It's a great addition to the community in the town of Ural, and we thank, on council's behalf, I'd like to thank the association for all their hard work on this facility. The Town of View Royal and the Highland Games Association, as noted by Jim, um, have co-hosted an annual Canada Day celebration for the past number of years, but unfortunately, it was had to be canceled this year because of the pandemic. So we are very fortunate that the association is able to put on this Highland Games and Celtic Festival for you today. So thank you, Highland Games Association and Jim Maxwell for hosting yet another fabulous event, and we hope to have many uh, events in the future and years to come. So Thank you, Mayor. It's now my pleasure to introduce the Chieftain of the 157th Victoria Highland Games and Celtic Festival. 
Richard Lindsay is the director of the Provincial Heritage Branch, with whom I and members of the VHGA have worked closely with over the last eight years as the VHGA has managed the Craig Flower property as a national and provincial historic site. Richard has supported and encouraged our association's vision for a new community centre on the property. I can honestly say that without Richard, we would not now be in the position we are where we will be starting construction on the new building within the next six months. In addition, Richard and his wife Kimberly have volunteered for several years at the Games, helping out wherever needed, as well as Richard making presentations on heritage and culture. So I'd like to ask the Chieftain of the Games to say a few words. Your Worship, Mr. Maxwell, dignitaries and athletes, it is my great honour to speak to you this afternoon as Chieftain of the 2020 Games from the traditional territory of the Lekwungen peoples. The Chieftain of the Games is now something of an honorary position, but historically the role would involve looking after the well-being of the clan. Looking around me at these fine athletes, I have no doubt they can look after themselves and the rest of us. Nevertheless, the role does give me an opportunity to reflect during this pandemic that strives to keep us apart on the great cultural traditions that bind us and bring us together. While we honour the physical heritage of places like Craigflower Manor, standing behind me, it is the living heritage of competition, pipe music, dance and ceremony that brings places like Craigflower alive and brings people together. I have great admiration for the determination of the Victoria Highland Games Association that has continued the long-standing tradition of the Highland Games in Victoria and now with the Celtic Festival making it one of the premier community events in the Pacific Northwest. And I respect the thoughtful approach they have taken to ensure we can enjoy these games in safety through the live stream on Czech News Facebook page. The extraordinary volunteers of the association are also the stewards of Craigflower Manor, a former farm of the predominantly Scottish-run Puget Sound Agricultural Company. In taking a lease on the provincial heritage property, the association has restored a connection with our community's Scottish heritage going back to the mid-19th century, to the Mackenzies and the farm labourers and tradespeople they brought with them from Britain to operate the farm. These roots that prevail in so many British Columbia families are reflected in the great popularity of the games in Victoria. You have likely recently heard, indeed you just heard, that the society will soon break ground on a cultural centre here at Craig Flower, and I can think of no better way to strengthen our community than by, sharing, by the sharing of diverse cultures such as the one we are witnessing today. Despite my excitement at the promise of the society and all that they represent, I shall now be succinct and cut to the chase to fulfill my main duty today. It is now my great honour to declare the 157th Victoria Highland Games and Celtic Festival open. Thank you for that uh, games tradition. Uh, Mass Pipe Bands honor the Chieftain by playing Highland Laddie. Thank you, Chieftain. Your Worship, Pipe Major, please proceed with the final part of the Mass Pipe Bands and the opening ceremonies.
Okay, so um, Gaelic football is an Irish sport. Um, it started in the late 1800s and um, it's we've kind of exported it around the world. There's 24 teams in Canada, um, five or six in Vancouver, and as I said, we're the first here on the island. Um, it's kind of similar to rugby and soccer, a combination of the two. And um, you can score goals, um, getting in the back of the net or kicking it over the crossbar and that's worth one point. A goal is worth three points. And uh, some of the basic rules is you can't take more than four steps without either bouncing the ball or kicking it to yourself. And you can kick the ball or pass it, hand pass it to your teammates. If you want to join up with us, we practice on various pitches in Victoria. So you have to be uh, island-based ideally to come out and practice. Um, we do Saturdays from 10 till 12 at Lansdowne Middle School right now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's no experience needed to join. Uh, if you've played Gaelic before, that's great. If you've never played any sports before, that's great. Uh, you just have to be 18 or older. Ready, folks? Right. Super Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, the Victoria Highland Games Association is very pleased to have with us at the 157th Highland Games. Please welcome Black Angus. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. Cheers. To all of you out there in Streamland, nice to be here. When I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. They pulled my hair and they stole my coat. Well, that's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty. She is the belle of Carwood City. She Court in one, two, three. Please to tell me who is she? Ah! Here we go. Tell me, Ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Hold my hair, they stole my comb, but that's all right till I go home. She is handsome. She is pretty, she's the belle of Alpha City She is caught in one, two, three Please don't tell me who is she Albert Mooney says he loves her All the boys are fighting for her They knock on the door, ring the bell Oh, my true love, are you well? Out she comes, way to slow Rings on her fingers and bells on her toes Old Jenny Murray says she'll die She doesn't need the fellow with the robe She is pretty, she is a belle of Belfast City She is caught in one, two, three She's on the telly, who is she? Tell me, Ma, when I go home The boys won't leave, the girls are alone Hold my hair, I stole my comb That's all right, till I go home She is handsome, she is pretty She is a belle of Belfast City She is caught in one, two, three Please, what you tell me? 
Tell me who can sheep. Thank you, friends. I'm going to shuffle forward. We're delighted to be back today with Alex McQuaig on the bass and Sarah Tradewell on the fiddle. All the way from Vancouver. I'm going to sing you a song now that is a little bit of the old world and a little bit of the new. This is called My Heart, Oh My Heart, Oh My Heart, Oh My Head. Well, a match was made last night to a girl I neither, girl I neither loved nor liked. I should take my own advice I should just leave her behind And go rove in the wide world Over. Oh my heart, oh my heart Angus original. Thank you very much. Hello there. My name is Ian Booth. I'm the president of the Victoria Scottish Community Centre. It's a, uh, a branch of the Victoria Highland Games. And uh, we've just put on a very successful 157th Highland Games here at the Craigflower Manor site, which you can see our, our building here is the old historic Craigflower Manor, which was built uh, by the Scottish community in the early 18, or mid 1800s. Pardon me. Uh, what we're doing now, we're trying to uh, support the Highland Games in some manner by building a building that'll give us funding to uh, support the Highland Games for a future since we're not perhaps able to have our big events that we have in the past uh, and to augment uh, our funding we are building a hundred and uh, pardon me a 10,000 square foot community performing arts center on this beautiful property here located at the corner of Craigflower and Admirals Road it's a very scenic property three and a half acres which we have a uh, 
a 30-year lease from the provincial government and we have a mandate to build a building on the property. Uh, do so, to do so, we're building a 10,000 square foot uh, building, which was where the heavy events were taking place earlier uh, during the day here. Uh, the building will be a circular building, which uh, we'll show you some drawings of later. We're hoping we are going to be starting this project in the next six months. We're going to be turning soil over and starting construction. The project is a $4.4 million project, which we have funding in place right now for $4 million. We're looking to reach out to the community to raise another $400,000 to help us reach our goal. We don't want to go be in the position of having to finance, so we're looking to have the money in place and uh, meet our goals. To meet our goals, we're look, reaching out to the community to try to uh, seek ways of, uh, of reaching that goal. We are a charitable society and we're able to provide charitable tax receipts to donors. We have several different uh, levels of donations. We have a, a BRIC program which will start at 250 or $400 which will get a brick on the paving stone of the entrance into the new uh, facility. We also have a patrons program which will uh, for donations of a hundred, pardon me, of a thousand dollars or more, patrons will get their name inscribed on a very prominent uh, plaque in the entranceway to the building. And we're also looking for sponsors who may be able to contribute more than that, who may be uh, recognized in some other manner as they see as we see fit or they see fit to uh, perhaps give naming rights to portions of the hall. Now the hall I mentioned is a 10,000 square foot building. It will be a performing arts center to uh, serve the needs of this community and also the Greater Victoria. So uh, I look forward to your help and support and helping us reach our goals and any, any, uh, any way you can help would be appreciated. Once we get running we'll have uh, other opportunities for donations to help uh, maintain and keep the facility going and uh, we're looking at anything you have to offer, we're willing to talk. So give us a, a shout and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us here at our Highland Games at Craig Flower Manor. We hope you enjoyed today's events and we look forward to having you join us in person at the 2021 Games at Topaz Park next May.